Hey y'all, today we're gonna be making a meatloaf parmesan in our slow cooker. With a few ingredients, you can have a huge dinner that's gonna be a hit. It's gonna be real simple to make and we're gonna do it all while having a whole lot of fun. It's getting steamy. Hi, welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy. That's me, and we're cooking up dishes from recipes that crock.com, my beautiful wife's cooking blog. And today we are going to be making a meatloaf parmesan in our slow cooker. Meatloaf parmesan. It's got meat, it's got cheese, it's got pizza sauce. In fact, my daughter calls it pizza <laughs> because it's like a meatloaf that kind of tastes like a pizza. And I, Scout's Honor, never was a Scout, but let's say I was. Two, three fingers? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, it has happened to me right in front of my face, and I just cannot hide it. Who sings that? I know it wasn't Kansas. <laughs> anyway, this is the best meatloaf I've ever had. <laughs> so let's say my mom ever gets the internets, <laughs> and she gets the YouTubes, and she watches her son say that, Mom, I'm sorry. This meatloaf beats your meatloaf. There's no better meatloaf. I'm telling you right oh, now. I'm sure there's better meatloaf out there. We just really enjoy it. There's this no one. meatloaf that I have ever tasted that's better <laughs> than this meatloaf. But my wife, who has made this for me, in fact, I just had some for lunch and I'm going to have it for dinner now. I'm cool about that. Uh, she's going to tell me step by step ingredients and I will show them to you. Right. So, first of all, let's say this recipe was inspired by an oven recipe. Oh, that's right. We found in. One of George Stella's cookbooks. Stella! Oh my god. I've been wanting to do that so bad. <laughs> All right. George Stella. Cool family. Cool story. Go ahead. Yes. So he has low carb cookbooks. And so we've been kind of been seeing how to adapt things to the uh, slow cooker. Because mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of his stuff is slow cooker. Maybe not any of it. I really haven't seen anything. So. We are just like toying around with things and altering the recipes a little bit and then of course adapting them for the slow cooker. So, with that said, um, just I just wanted to make sure that we put that out there and we'll put a link to his cookbook down below. This is not sponsored or anything like that. No. We're just kind of testing out ways um, because uh, we are um, personally eating some lower carb things. Mm -hmm. So we were just kind of seeing how you could maybe use um, a method he uses in his cookbooks to make a slow cooker meatloaf and we really like it. So It worked out really good. So George, if you're watching, here's a slow cooker way to do that recipe. <laughs> now, what are we going to okay. what, What's in the ingredients? So first thing, we've got two and one quarter pounds of lean ground beef. Now, it is important lean. that it be careful. Oh, yeah, I don't want to dump that it's out. It's important that it's lean because it's going, all the um, fat is going to cook out of the meatloaf as it cooks, and so that's going to be pooled around the edges. Yep. And so you, if you use a higher fat meat to make your meatloaf, you're going to get a smaller and smaller meatloaf and way more fat in the crock yep. pot. You're going to still have a lot of oil around the outside, which we just cook it up, and then when it's done, take it out of that oil and put it in the refrigerator for the leftovers. Yep. So, but anyhow, so we have two and one quarter pounds and the reason it's two and one quarter is because that's how they put the two pound packages at our grocery store. So we just adapted everything for that. So that's that. Um, one 15 ounce jar of pizza sauce. And if you are eating low carb, you should check the back labels because not all pizza sauces are made equal. Like I can see this without my glasses. Yeah, it's okay. So you're gonna you're gonna want to check. We have found for our our um, our choices that we have that the generic great value brand um, from Walmart has lower carb. Um, also, if you are not eating low carb, this meatloaf still is amazing. So don't. Yeah, worry we're not making health food here. <laughs> this is just <laughs> yummy. Yeah, it's just really really it's good. It's just yummy. It just happens to be low carb. Yep. Okay. And then we have a teaspoon and a half of um, pizza seasoning, or you could use Italian seasoning. It's just got your basic oregano, and I'm not sure what all's in there, but it's just the Italian seasoning. 
you can use that. Then we have two teaspoons of garlic. Haha, -ha, I'm pinching it around on you. We like to use freeze dried. Oh, <laughs> just leave it. <laughs> we like to use freeze dried, um, but you could use fresh and just use two teaspoons. Um, we also um, are using two tablespoons of freeze dried shallots, which you could use. Um, just you could use um, dried minced onion if you would prefer, if that's easier. Um, we just keep shallots on hand, and so it's easier for us to mm -hmm. just grab this. Um, also, to kind of give it a little bit, punch up the flavor a little bit, we are using two tablespoons of dried bell peppers. You can use fresh and just use a quarter cup if you're going to use fresh. Here's the dried that we get. Um, just get this in the Yeah, you can get it on too. Amazon. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We also have two eggs. And the tip that we got from George Stella's cookbooks was to use uh, Parmesan cheese as the binder instead of using breadcrumbs. And so that's what we're using. We are using shredded Parmesan cheese. So you get that in the refrigerated section over by all the other shredded cheeses. And so um, I, we just really like the flavor and how this comes together. Yep. Also salt and pepper. Um, and we also... And the camera battery. Uh, <laughs> and we also have um, a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese for the end. Um, so, no, not that oh, end. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So you're going to mix everything together except for you're not going to use your mozzarella cheese and you're going to reserve the rest of your pizza sauce except for one cup. So one cup you're going to put in the meatloaf and then the rest of that jar you're going to put on top. So meat in a bowl. Yes, meat in a bowl. Pizza sauce. One cup Yep. in a bowl. Pizza seasoning, Italian seasoning Yep. in the bowl. Garlic in the bowl. Can you guess where the onion's going? Mm -hmm. Or the shallots? In the bowl. And then we got our green and red pepper dried mm -hmm. in the bowl. Our two eggs. Now let's just see how good we are. Oh here. my. <laughs> Pressure here. One, two, three. No shells in the bowl. No, those are shallots. We're good. <laughs> And then our par Parmesan cheese in a bowl. And then wash your hands. Yep. Dry your hands. And now that's it. Just take your You're, favorite gonna, smusher. Yep. This is ours. We like the zing one. Somebody asked about that, um, and yeah. we'll put a link to this one. Uh, this is the favorite one, isn't it? This mm -hmm. is one. This is the Zing uh, mixer, kind of like a pampered chef's got a mix and chop. Yeah, food chopper. It's a food chopper. Uh, somebody asked in one of the previous videos, so if you're watching this one, this is it. It's a Zing, and we'll put a link to it down below before I hit myself in the face with it. And all I want to do is get it all mixed up. Mix up all of the spices with the meat, with the cheese, with the egg. The egg and the cheese are what's going to bind this up. So again, like I said, we're, we're looking for low carb ways of doing things just for our own personal thing. We're not here to tout it. We're not here to tell you, you gotta. And don't worry, there's going to be plenty of carbs on the website. <laughs> yeah, trust me, there's lots of stuff. But we're just learning some things and um, finding and so when we find a really good recipe like this one, we like to share it. Yep, yep. It's really, really good. It's delicious. It's really yeah. good. I take a couple pieces of bacon to go with it. Yes. I had that in some green beans today, and it was fantastic. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. A little secret between me and you. Since we started doing the low carb, I've lost 22 pounds in just over a month. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> I know there's always somebody in the comments going, no. no it's the camera. It adds the other 10 pounds back. <laughs> but, like I said, you know, we've, we've said before in our As Good As It Gets shows, uh, we're not dietitians at all. We're not food experts. We're, we know how to eat food. We're good at it. I am an expert on that. I can eat and eat and eat and eat. But, I'm getting older, and I kind of want to stick around for quite a while. So we started exploring some low-carb options on stuff, but I knew that I also still wanted to eat good. 
because I like good food and I have to cook good food or else y'all aren't just going to stand there and watch me look or just stand there in the kitchen not doing nothing. So we're checking out some recipes like this one and it's very, very good. Delectable. But this would be good even if the people who are coming over to your house eat that night. No, they're going to love it. They're going to find out where you got this recipe from and you're going to say, Stella! All right, babe. So I've got this pretty much okay. mixed up. Uh, your 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 meatloafing on the counter. I loaf you. Okay. Okay. All right. So now you want to push. You want to put the meat in your slow cooker. Do I need to spray that down? You know what? With as much oil as it's gonna have, I I at first I thought you maybe should. And I've tested it that way, mm -hmm. but honestly, it pulls away from the side. So you, you don't think it. so? Okay. No. I will get a I mean, you could if you bit. wanted to, but I could just you can't. Or you can use one of those handy dandy liners like we got, the silver yeah, liners. Yeah, but I don't know where ours is right don't now. Don't miss me too long. I'll be back. Bye. Here I am. Okay, so here's the key to, I think, making. You're going to want to put this in a six quart or seven quart slow cooker because that'll help it cook faster. Um, and we're going to cook on high um, for two hours. If you're going to cook it on low, you probably could go for four hours. Um, and the key here is to make the center the lower part of it so it will cook up just as fast as the sides. Okay. All right. So... You can use your I mean, it doesn't cooker. have to be dramatically different. You just don't want it thicker in the center. Right. And well, think about, like, if you're cooking a hamburger on the grill. Yeah. You know how the center of it will plump up? That's mm -hmm. what a meatloaf's going to do in here, too. And when it's done, it'll plump back. It'll be plumped back up, yeah. too. So it's not. I'm afraid I'm going to have to get my hands dirty to do this. <sighs> <laughs> I just mush it down in there like that. It feels kind of wet. Oh, it'll cook. But, that'll, but that moisture is going to cook out. I hope so. At least I told you it will. Let's hope it does. But just kind of make sure it's pushed down in the center like that. And then that center is still going to when we get back. Yeah. So we'll put a lid on it, and you're going to set it for how long and how hot? You're going to cook it on high for two, two and a half hours. We're going to check ours with a meat thermometer because the other thing about it is you can't test, like, ground beef. You shouldn't be testing by, you know, does it look red, does it look brown. Don't we're gonna, with your finger we're gonna, No, we're going to put a meat thermometer in it and test it. And once the once we know that the meatloaf is done in the center. How hot's that? Um, computer, what temperature should you cook ground beef to? The recommended minimum internal temperature for ground beef is 160 degrees Fahrenheit, yes. 71.1 degrees Celsius. I always cook it to 165. Yep, so now you know, 160 to 165, get it up there, it'll come back down. So we'll all come back here in a couple hours, and for you it's just going to be one snap away, and we'll put the cheese and the pizza sauce on it, and let that melt down and show you a finished product as simple as this. One, two, three. And that's all it took. And now we're going to check out and see how our meatloaf turned out. As you can see on the top here, look, you see that? It's that, that stuff, that gelatinous stuff. That is the oil and the juices of the meat. Um, all you so do is... So if you had been using less than lean ground beef, it would have been even It would have more. been a puddle. If you look on the side, you can see all the oil around the sides here. So you just scrape it off. Yep, just so kind of pull that back. Sauce on top. Do it just like that. Just like that. Like you're painting a little picture. Happy little trees. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just nope. want a good, non-oily place to put our... Yeah, yeah, because you want it to stick. Our stall I'll sauce put that on my serving plate because I don't care. It's good. Sauce first? Yes. Sauce all over. Just... Just the rest of it, yep. And spread it out so it's even. Mm. I turned your jar upside down so you wouldn't have such a hard time getting it. Baby, you've turned my world upside <laughs> down. All right. Just spread it. I'll wipe off my fingers. Somebody's going to say something like, he licked his fingers, then he messed with the meatloaf with the spatula. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, you've got some dishes to do, lady. I know. You know I'll clean them up later. Right? <laughs> 
do right now? So I'm going to take my spatula. I have that recorded. I didn't say how much later. <laughs> and just kind of spread out the sauce. Yep. Kind of like you would a pizza. Yep. And then you've got a two cup bag there and we put, I put about a cup and a half. I tried a cup and then I was like, oh, I need some more cheese. So I put another half cup. Now I know you. You don't need to say. put the whole two cups on. <laughs> Hurry, right, pooper. <laughs> I was going to. All right, so I'm just gonna sprinkle that cheese on. Sprinkle that cheese on. <laughs> sprinkle that cheese on. It'll be fine. Now you're not gonna be able to eat it until that cheese melts, so you might not put quite so much. <laughs> All right. Put the lid back on. I'm going to kind of spread that out just a little bit because that kind of piled up in the middle. All right. And so the now, heat from the meatloaf, plus I hope it's still on high. It may have gotten turned off. Um, you might put the lid back on. All right. Throw it back on high. high. Just, yeah, just for a few minutes. Okay. So now we've put the cheese on on top of the sauce after scraping off the, the stuff that comes up onto the top of the meat which is natural, that's fine, don't freak out. Kind of scraped it off, put all that stuff on, and then at the snap of a finger, our cheese shall be melted. In three, two, one. Cheese is melted! Let's see what she looks like now. Oh, it does look like. Now I know why Addie calls it pizza. <laughs> it just looks like, well, it looks like a pizza from the top. This but. is one of those amazing dishes that is so good like when you eat it the first time and the leftovers are even better and all that cheese you're going to be glad you put it on there. Special stuff. I just saying. I love the leftovers of this dish. You do? Yes. I do too. <laughs> like I said, I had it for lunch, but I did not have it fresh out of the slow cooker. So we're going to give it a try. So the pizza sauce and the cheese you can see it's all incorporated itself and melted down kind of mixed itself together through the heat so that's on the top of it but let's get to the bottom of this dish let's get to the bottom of let's see here let's get to the meat of it right <laughs> so let's just whack a little piece off right here all right we'll get just a little bite since i'm gonna save some for later but this is what she looks like right Ooh, get back up there Look at that. Mm, 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 mm. Kind of looks like a slice of pizza, doesn't it? But you know, I can tell you how pretty it is and how good it looks, but we got to do an official taste test. And I am the official taste tester of Recipes That Croc. Are I, you? I do a good job at it. Do you wear a badge? <laughs> no, but I usually wear some of my food. Can I help you? Now, mm, I bit my lip off. <laughs> I got so involved in eating it. I tried to chew my own lip off. If you wanted to make this really taste like a pizza, maybe toast some garlic bread to go with it. Mm -hmm. If you don't want the low carb option, which is totes cool, <laughs> but that by itself is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. I need to officially taste test it times two. I feel like a blue on it. But mm -hmm. it's half okay. It's worth the pain. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yeah, if you're not going low carb, you could totally serve that over spaghetti. Mm -hmm. oh, as oh. like a, a, a fun twist on a, um, a fun twist on um, a meatball. Mm -hmm. It tastes a lot oh. like a meatball. That's a good a meatball. That's <laughs> all it is, it's a great big ball of meat with cheese and pizza sauce on yeah. top. Yeah. Um, or like we like to eat it as is with just like traditional sides to what you would eat as sides for meatloaf. So I had green beans with it while ago. Yeah, it was fantastic. That was great. Mm. It just has a really great flavor to it. It's one of my favorite meatloafs. That's really good. Mm -hmm. The pizza spice that you put in there, or the Italian seasonings that you put in the meat, really it brings out so much flavor right again that's what it makes it taste like such a meaty pizza yeah i think it would mm. even be good to substitute maybe do half ground beef half sausage mm -hmm. i think it would be a good a good combo too 
I'll be happy to try that for you if you want. <laughs> Would you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll even taste test it for you. <laughs> no mm. complaints, huh? Mm, <laughs> no, only one. What? I should have put more on the plate. <laughs> We want to thank you for watching another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy. And if you like what you saw, do one of these <clears throat> on the bottom there. And also, click subscribe if you've not become a member of our little crock posse. We do things all the time on this channel. We cook good food. We sing a little. We laugh a lot. And we have a good time. Join us. And, you know, just keep watching. Because if y'all keep watching, I'll keep cooking. And all will be well. I'm going to go get me another spatula and get me another piece of this meatloaf. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Ray? <laughs> Not you. No. Sit. Good boy.